system. So when you think of the skeletal system, what do you think of? supports your whole entire body. So there are five main functions of the skeletal system. The first includes movement, so you can move, you know, certain parts of the skeletal system. So the skeletal system provides points of attachment um, for muscles, your legs and arms, um, you know, where the muscles pull on the bones, so they're able to do that, you know, through the muscular system, but the skeletal and the muscular system work very closely together. Support also, so when you think of support, you think of your backbone. Um, it's the main support um, center for the upper body. It hosts, you know, your head up and it protects your spinal cord as well. So we've got movement, support. We also have protection. So the bones of your skull protect your brain. Um, your ribs protect your lungs and heart from injury. Another thing that the skeletal system does is it makes blood. So within your bones, your body is making red and white blood cells. Um, and these are formed by a tissue called bone marrow. And it's in the center of a bone. And then the last um, function of the skeletal system is storage. So bones store minerals such as calcium and phosphorus um, for use by the body when needed. So we've got five main functions. So the first one that we talked about was movement. of the skeletal system that we talked about was support. The third function of the skeletal system, production. The fourth makes blood cells. And then the 
last one we have irregular. So I think of like your spine. So we've got long, short, flat, and irregular. Are the main types. also a structure to the bones. So there's four typical layers. Okay, so we have the layer that covers the bone. We have the layer that lies beneath that part that covers the bone. And then we have a part of the spongy bone. So this lies beneath, you know, the compact bone. And then we have bone marrow. So there's four main parts. Um, bone marrow fills the gaps between the spongy bone as well. So bones are very complex. You know, when you think about the structure, they're living structures um, that undergo growth and development. Um, a thin, tough outer membrane covers the bone, allowing for production. And beneath the outer membrane is a layer of a compact bone. So it's hard and dense, um, but not solid. It is filled with holes and has small canals for blood vessels and nerves, so it's able to store things and, you know, create blood cells within that area. So when we also think about that, you know, inside of that, there's that spongy layer. It's called spongy bone. Um, it has many small spaces. It's lightweight, but very strong. Spongy bone is also found at the ends of bones as well. So in the spaces of many bones, you have a soft connective tissue, and this is called marrow. There's two types of marrow. So there's red and yellow. So red marrow is going to produce the body's blood cells. Yellow marrow stores fat that can serve as an energy reserve. So within your bones, you've got Red and yellow. Red makes the blood cells. Yellow stores the fat that can be used as an energy reserve. So we know that bones are used for production. So how strong do you think that bones are? Good. So with the structure of bones, make it both strong and lightweight. 20% um, of an adult's body weight is bone. Bone is made up of two minerals. Do you know what they are? Calcium and phosphorus, good. So, how do you think that bones develop? So, as an infant, most of your skeleton is cartilage. So, if you think of your nose, that flexible area there, that's cartilage. It's a strong, flexible tissue. So, over time, the cartilage is replaced by solid bone, usually completed by the time you stop growing. Not all cartilage is replaced in adults, though. Many joints contain cartilage, um, protecting the ends of bones. Also, your ears have cartilage, and your nose is cartilage as well. So now we're just going to talk about some of the bones and where they're located on your body. So the first one we're going to talk about. Is um, clavicle or a collarbone. So this bone is located right here. So it's connecting, um, you know, the shoulder joint away from the body. Um, and it's as thick as your little finger, so it's not that big. So we've got that right here. We've got one on both sides, and that's going to connect to the shoulder joint. So the next bone that we're going to talk about. So the scapula is located on the back side of the ribcage, 
and it helps provide part of the shoulder joint and movement for the arms. So it's on the back side, it's a pretty kind of almost looks like a little winged, but it's on got one on both sides. It's on the back and it's connecting to your shoulder joint. You're going to think of, you know, your back region that goes down. It's going to connect um, to your skull and go all the way down. So, um, you think of the cervical region as the neck bones. Um, and then you also have, you know, what attaches to the neck bones and then the lower part of the back as well. So, it's got three main parts. So the next um, type of bone that we're going to talk about is the humerus. And the humerus is the upper arm bone. So it's also going to connect, you know, with that shoulder joint um, in the scapula. So it's a longer bone. It's right there. And you also, you know, call it the upper arm bone, the humerus. going to talk about is the radius and ulna. So we've got the humerus. The radius and ulna are the lower two bones that are in your arm. you know, this area, it's connecting to your hand and then also the radius and ulna. And if we keep going, um, the top of your hand here, um, those are the metal carpals. And we 
have um, these stern so you've got your ribs here and then in between the ribs you've got your sternum it's kind of just you know that bone that connects all of the rib cages And we're going to move on to the legs. So, um, within your legs, you have the largest bone in the body. Does anyone know what this is called? Your femur. Good. So, we've got the femur. That's the largest bone in the leg. It's on your um, thighs up here. And then connecting to the femur is the... Tibia and fibula. So if we were to, I should actually you know, draw a little picture of kind of what this would look like. And this is just a picture. So we've got, let's see, this is the femur. This is the longest bone in the body. We've got you know, the knee joint here that connects to the tib tibia and fibula. So we've got those two bones there. Um, the tibia is actually the bigger, you know, one that's more in the front, and then the fibula is more of the smaller one, and those are going to connect to the ankle joint and feet. So, it's best drawing. And so connecting to the tibia and fibula, we've got the tarsals. Um, so it's kind of, you know, where the ankle bone connects and all of the bones. Your feet actually have a lot of different bones. So, you know, if you end up injuring something, you know, it's got other things to support it. But some of the bones are able to support better than others. Um, but there are a lot of bones in your feet. I don't remember the exact number, but... There are a lot. So, again, you've got the metatarsals, which are the part that goes um, before kind of your toes. The toes are called the phalanges. So, we talked about the bones. Um, now, we're going to talk about joints. So, a joint is a place where two bones come together. Joints allow the bones to move in different ways. So, with that being, there's two types of joints. There's immovable and movable. So, immovable joints would be things like the skull. So, it's a joint that allows little or no movement. Uh, and then movable joints are, you know, joints that are able to move. So, they allow the body to move in a wide range of movements. Bones and movable joints are held together by strong connective tissues called ligaments. Um, and ligaments just connect bones to bones. And there are four types of movable joints. So the first um, type of movable joint is the ball and socket joint. So kind of thinking about, you know, the shoulder. You've got a little ball there in the scapula. And then your humerus connects to that. So you've got the socket and then the ball. So there's a round end of a bone on your humerus bone, and it's fitting snugly into the bone. So also another um, ball and socket would be your hips as well. So these are the types of joints that allow for the greatest amount of movement. So you're allowed to swing your arm freely in a circle because of this type of joint. A hinge joint is the next kind of joint we're going to talk about. So it's movement in one direction. So think about your elbow and also your knee. It's hinged like a door. Um, it allows forward and backward movement. So your elbow and your knees are the examples of that. Um, and then a pivot joint. So a pivot joint is a bone resting um, on top of another bone permitting free movement. So like your wrists, your ankles, 
and your neck. It's allowing one bone to rotate around another. So it allows your head to turn, but there's no, you know, ball and socket, and it's not a hint you're able to move in different directions. And then a gliding joint. Um, so think of kind of like your, your ankle, your knuckles, your wrist. Um, it's allowing a bone to slide over another. So it's, a, it's allowed, you know, you're allowed to bend and flex as well as make limited side-to-side -side motions as well. Um, yeah, that is all that I have for today's lesson on the skeletal system. I hope that you enjoyed this.